So you will find that the four very important contributions made by Ada Lovelace and then subsequently there was a computer language which has been named after her and that language is called as Ada language. It was developed by the uh, Department of Defense in the United States. It has also got some, when you look at the features in Python and if you look at some of the features in Ada language, you will find there are some commonalities. The language didn't become very popular but still remains as a very important contribution. The second picture, the one in the middle, was the person Charles Babbage. Okay. He was the one who built the difference engine with the support of the British government and he was the one who designed the analytical engine. Both were mechanical contraptions, they didn't have any electrical or electronics part in it. But unfortunately the second analytical engine never could be built successfully and therefore it remained incomplete. To some extent both uh, Lady Lovelace as well as Charles Babbage worked together. Babbage has got a very large contribution in terms of development of computing machines or development of machines that were built by him. He ran short of money and etc. etc. but he was the one who also pioneered the computer machinery work actually. The third one is a very important person. His name is Alan Turing. You know there is a concept called Turing machine. Now Alan Turing has got two very important contributions. He died very young. He in fact committed suicide unfortunately. But uh, the two important, and he was a genius right from the beginning. He had a PhD from Princeton University. He was a British person. He worked in the uh, cryptography department of the British Armed Forces. And he is credited for cracking the encryption code of the Germans, the uh, Allied forces, in fact, Prime Minister Winston Churchill at that time credited that the victory of the Allies has been due to many, many people, but a very significant contribution was that of Alan Turing. He was able to crack the German code and able to decipher the messages that were passed on between the uh, different units of the German army. But before that, when he was working, this is the work that he did, which according to me, as far as this discussion is concerned, is not very important. But the first part is that he conceived, in some sense, the theoretical foundation of what is called as the Turing machine, a logical, consistent framework of a computer was laid out by Alan Turing. And if you see his work, you will find it quite a bit of it is theoretical and the concepts of automata and the finite state machine. Now these are some of the terms you may not uh, understand fully but the fact of the thing is that you must have a finite state machine. You must have consistency in your data processing. You must have uh, been able to prove your uh, algorithms or you have to show the algorithms as to how they are successful. Now what should be the framework of a logical thinking or logical machine. You can call it as a computer, you can call it as any other thing. And he didn't build anything. He, he was not a hardware person. But he built the framework of today's modern computer. And therefore, Turing machine is a, Turing machine is a very important concept in computer science. And Turing's contributions are also considered as very significant in computer science. So the three important personalities that I mentioned, uh, obviously he was uh, complimented but as I said, he didn't build any machine, but there is a name, as you can see, Hilbert uh, provided him the guidance in terms of his theoretical framework. Gödel's work was useful for him, again, to develop his Turing machine. And von Neumann, who was then at UPenn and then subsequently at Princeton, was able to build a computer, which is what I showed you as UNIVAC computer. So von Neumann uh, and Turing worked together. Von Neumann was a total system span, while Turing was more of a theoretical person. As I said earlier, that the algorithms and the cryptographic work that he did is also credited to be very significant. So this is something like, which is mostly European and then leading into the American shore. These three gentlemen are also very important, as you know. And uh, I have intentionally not put the names because I want you to think a little bit and write down or maybe search and nowadays all this information is so plentifully available 
on the Wikipedia or the internet that you will be able to find it out very quickly. The first one has got, uh, his name is Cloud Shannon. He has got many, many contributions. And in fact, if you look at the wireless communication area, and there are many uh, uh, inventions or, but his main thing is what we are going to discuss today is the concept of Boolean algebra. You know? So the concept of the Boolean operations and how it is inter, because this led to when the transistors were developed and when the digital electronics came along, you will find that the foundation was laid by Cloud Shannon and his other work is related to the communications area where you will find that Shannon's communications principles are considered very pioneering. And there is a concept of what is called as entropy. You must have studied entropy in your thermodynamics part of the physics course. And there is also something called as a Shannon's entropy in some sense. There are a variety of definitions of entropy. One of them has been also attributed to Shannon, a very important person. The one in the middle that I mentioned to you earlier is uh, von Neumann. The John von Neumann, again, a very important person who built these two people, Atanasov and uh, John Neumann, uh, von Neumann, they are the pioneers in the major mainframe computers, actually. So both of them have contributed uh, two different places. He was in Iowa, he was in Princeton and UPenn, and therefore they, they, these are the two groups simultaneously developed the mainframe computing machines. They were, they developed the electrical or electromechanical devices, mostly valves and uh, the, the valve tubes at that time because the electronic of transistors was not as much available. But they did work and as I said at that time, the reprogrammability was done by changing the wires. I showed you some of the photographs last time that the back end of the computer, the wires were changed so as to reprogram the computer. So the programming concept was getting evolved and that is the contribution of the set, next set of people who were really at the forefront of the programming concepts. Now just to summarize what these three gentlemen did, Cloud Shannon developed the Boolean operations and the equivalent electromechanical circuits. He was also quite a bit active in the hardware so he showed that if this is the Boolean operation, for instance there is a, a AND operation Okay, the AND operation means uh, A and B. That means if A is true as well as B is true, then the concept, if I say C is equal to A and B, that means A is a proposition, <coughs> B is a proposition. If both the propositions are true, then C is true. Okay, that is what is the la AND operation is there. Similarly, R and many other operations that were there. So he developed the Boolean algebra and also showed how electromechanical devices can be used to illustrate these Boolean operations. Von Neumann laid the foundation of the design of the first. Von Neumann co coordinated a very large team of people and he built the first uh, computer, uh, the Univac one, which was uh, I showed you last time, uh, the pictures of it. Simultaneously in Iowa, John Atanasoff built a major computer using vacuum tubes. So his work and that of John von Neumann were almost at the same time, but both of them contributed to what we call as the mainframe computing devices. Now I come to last time also I mentioned, besides Ada Lovelace, uh, there were many women who contributed significantly in the field of computer science. And I thought it will be very important to mention them, not only their faces, but also what exactly is the theoretical or the technical contribution of these uh, women actually. Now the first one as you can see she was a naval officer working at Harvard University for the Mark I computer. That was the one which was built. There were several groups in the US which were, were building up computers and her name is Gracie Hopper and she retired as an admiral, a vice admiral or rear admiral in the US Navy and she developed the concept of programming using the punched cards or the punched tape at that time. It was not a card, it was a tape, but she had worked very extensively and she and the professor there together showed how punched tapes can be used for the uh, programming of the Mark I computer. At the Princeton as well as the UPenn group, 
you will find these two ladies. This her name is uh, Jean Jennings, then married to Bartik. So Jean Jennings Bartik developed the concepts. She was asked to do this programming, you know, the things like things. She found out that if it is repetitive, why do we program again and again and again and again in the main program several times the same thing? If it is appearing same thing several times, might as well take it and call it as a subroutine and that can be called by passing the parameters. So the concept of using the same sub program several times in a main program by just adjusting the parameters that have to go in and the parameters that have to come out. Now this concept of what is called as a sub program or a subroutine is extremely important, is attributed to Jean Jenning because these ladies had to work large number of hours. In fact, there was a very big group of about eight, ten ladies. All of them were supposed to be the programmers. Now, what is meant by programmers in those days? Means changing those cables, actually. So slowly and slowly, they got into these uh, concepts of uh, punched card and the punch tape. Towards the end of their career, they obviously had started using the punched cards, actually. But only up to the punched cards, not the kind of machines that you and I use today.